Good afternoon. Good afternoon to all our viewers. Good afternoon, Esther. Good afternoon to you too. Are you fine? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Are you able to hear me? Hester, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, can't you hear me? I think my mic is on. It looks fine. Just getting sorted. Hester, can you hear me? I can. Yeah, I can see you clearly now and I can hear you properly. I hope you will maintain that position. Uh, good afternoon to all our viewers and good afternoon to everyone who's following us and who's sharing uh, uh, this uh, lecture and this empowerment session. Uh, today we've got a very nice guest uh, on behalf of Apile Communications. We've got a physiotherapist on our floor. Uh, we've got Hester van Asvegen, is a physiotherapist with a special interest in pelvic floor dysfunction and pelvic floor muscle health. She has done numerous postgraduate courses to further her knowledge in the field and has presented uh, a lot of papers and a lot of work in conferences and in various uh, courses on the pelvic floor dysfunction and incontinence. Remember last week we were talking about uh, incontinence, urinary incontinence. So we've got someone now who's a physiotherapist on the therapy of uh, how some of these things will get sorted. This is a women's month. She is the course coordinator for pelvic and women's health physiotherapy group for postgraduate courses in the field and is part of lecturing team of the postgraduate module. So if you talk about um, women's pelvic floor, she is uh, one person to go to in terms of physiotherapy. She's part of the multidisciplinary team involved with treatment of patients with sexual dysfunction together with Dr. Elna Rudolf of the My Sexual Health Center in Bernstein as well as the colorectal and pelvic floor unit at VETS. Once you speak about pelvic floor, you're not only looking at the urinary aspect of it, and you're not only looking at the sexual side of it, you are also including the GIT, that is the end of the gastrointestinal system, the rectum, the anus and everything. All those structures are governed by the pelvic floor muscles. Uh, she used to work at the VETS Donald Gordon Medical Center. She believes that uh, Collaboration in, in a multidisciplinary team ultimately delivers the best quality care to patients. Her is, she's passionate about providing the best service possible to patients' pelvic floor dysfunction, also educating the public. She's very good at educating the public, which is what we are into as Apile Communications. So that is why she is here today to educate the public and actually empower each and every woman as we wind up August in terms of empowerment. If you can master your pelvic floor muscles, then it means you can master all the functions that are performed by those muscles. Um, I think that's about all. She firmly believes that doing what you love is the cornerstone of having abundance in your life. Doing what you love is the cornerstone of having abundance in your life, which is quoted from Wayne Dyer. Uh, you can easily contact her on her email address, which is given, which we shall leave at the end of the session. Some people don't even know that there's some specialization or special interest in pelvic floor muscles. Now we've got her on our shores. Uh, Hester, can you kindly uh, greet our viewers? Good afternoon, everybody. And I just want to thank you for inviting me to be here. And I really hope in this session, like you said, that we can give women a little bit of information about this topic that's often not well known and something that people are afraid to speak of or um, just not seeking help easily about it. And I really hope that with what I can share with you this afternoon, that it will tell people a little bit more about how they can also help themselves um, with these type of problems. Yeah, but thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it. That's our pleasure as Apile Communications. Uh, our brand is focusing on uh, breaking the myths and stereotypes and actually empowering people on information, uh, especially on the areas that people are ignorant about 
or on problems that people find difficult to face, especially if you know we are in the field of sexual health. And I'm very grateful to Professor Elna McIntosh for actually hooking me with you. And I'm very, she's also very glad that you are actually on our screens today to share knowledge and to empower the bulk of our populations on things that are actually problematic. Uh, what, what does the scope of your work cover? What do you do on every day uh, in terms of what we're talking about today? Pelvic floor muscle dysfunction and pelvic health. Yes, yeah, so as a physiotherapist with an interest in um, pelvic floor dysfunction, we deal with any type of problem related to um, a dysfunction of those muscles inside the pelvis. And it can include anything from bladder problems, bowel problems, sexual function, or sexual dysfunction problems, so people with, um, for instance, urinary incontinence or fecal incontinence, um, pelvic organ prolapse, we see a lot of women with those type of problems. Pelvic pain is one of the main things that a lot of us will see in the field. Constipation. Um, yeah, so it, it can be quite a variety of problems. And I think it's also maybe interesting for people to note that um, this is not only a problem that relates to women. We also see patients, men and children with problems. Um, it's not as common, I think, but, uh, you know, so the main, our main population of patients is probably women. But just to remember that men and children can also have problems with these, these type of problems. That's perfect. Uh, last week we were discussing a topic on a urinary incontinence with Dr. Matabe. We noted that a lot of bladder incontinence issues, sphincter issues, uh, fecal incontinence issues, they actually uh, rely mostly on the uh, health of the pelvic floor muscles. Can you give us a picture of the anatomy of the pelvic floor? How does it look so that every woman who's watching the session and every man and every child who's watching our session can understand how the pelvic floor uh, looks like? Okay. So I've actually got a little pelvic model here that I'm going to show. And I think it's useful to, to look at this and see where it sits in the body. Um, because a lot of people do not understand. So let me see, I'm going to move my chair. Whoops, let's get myself and the model in the screen. Um, let's change this a little bit. Sorry. Yes. Let's see if I, is that, that better? There we go. That's perfect. So That's perfect, yeah. Is, the pelvis is this part. The pelvic floor muscles are the little muscles at the bottom of the pelvic floor. And if we look at the bottom section, you can see how it's a little bowl of muscle sitting there, coming from the um, pubic symphysis in front and going through to the coccyx. So Kindly, the yeah, there. that's the it. There at the bottom, can you see that? So the coccyx, it's a little coccyx bowl is of the muscle. tail, yeah. Um, yes, the I've got the wrong side here. The um, coccyx is at the back section and the pubic yes. synthesis is in the front. And it literally slings around that opening that you see there is the anal opening. So it comes from mm -hmm. the front to the back and slings around like that. And there's more than one layer of muscle. So this part is the deeper layer of the pelvic floor. But then if we yeah. add that little bit in, you can see the more superficial part of the pelvic floor. And there you can actually see the openings. So I want to hold it in a manner Maybe that's a bit better. But that's you perfect, can see yeah. From the top. I can see the anus. The top yeah. section, yes. Um, with the openings of the bladder and the vagina in the middle. And then the anal opening there at the back where my fingers are. And then all of these little muscles, you can see how it's a sphincter muscle in the front around the bladder and the vagina. There's a sphincter muscle at the back that we call the external anal sphincter. And then there's these little muscles to the side that attaches almost in a um, triangular fashion. The area in between we call the perennial body, um, yes. which is a very important supportive structure as part of your pelvic floor muscle. So all of these little muscles are the ones that we look at when we are dealing with a problem. Um, because if you have a dysfunction, so whether there's weakness of the muscles or tightness of the muscles, both of those type of um, problems with the pelvic floor can then lead to a bladder problem, a bowel problem, or a sexual function problem. So basically, it's these internal muscles inside the, the pelvis that we as physios will be looking at and assessing and evaluating um, how 
where the problem lies and how it also interlinks with the other core muscles like the diaphragm, the abdominals and the lower back muscles because they tend to function together. Um, but basically these are the inner muscles that we then look at and educate people then how to exercise them or massage them or whatever else is needed in order to get them back to normal function. That's perfect, uh, Hester. That's very loud and clear. Can you hear me, Dr. T? I think I've lost Hi. you. I can hear you, but I can't see you. Okay, I'm still here, I think. I haven't disappeared. That's very good. Uh, we saw the pelvic floor muscles very clearly. Yeah, I can, I can see you now. We saw the pelvic, thank you for the demonstration. Uh, I'm sure everyone, um, just born listening in summary, um, sila, nez, nez, flunu, ez, chegele, zaba, um, ganga, to that is, we flow, le pelvis. Uh, physiotherapist, I hope everyone has seen the muscles that loop around the anus, that loop around the bladder, I mean the, the neck of the bladder, and those are the muscles that actually assist with control and also looping around the vagina, and the importance of the perineum. That is Lenda Oipagati Kwamachala Kano number two. There is Hunes Pana. I hope people have seen clearly because that is what we are going to be dealing with, especially when it comes to uh, the health of those muscles and why they are important. Uh, I've seen there are quite a, a number of muscles that are actually looping around those structures. Why are they important in terms of uh, urinary function and also in terms of sexual function and in terms of the, the GIT function? Can you take us through the importance of those muscles in terms of control of those three areas? Okay. So if you think about the um, little muscles that I showed you that are the sphincter muscles, so those that um, looked like they were around. I can show you here on the model again. Yeah. So the, these little muscles that are the sphincter muscles, they should be able to contract around the openings in order to close off the openings and prevent one from leaking. Now, that's the simplified version of that. It's also a little bit more complicated because those deeper layers of the muscles, this little bowl um, here, contribute to the function. So, when the muscles shorten and contract. So as we know, any muscle in the body can um, contract and can relax. So they move and the pelvic floor does the same. When it contracts and it shortens, it then gives support around the bladder and anal structures to prevent you from leaking. And when they relax, and that's another important function of your pelvic floor, it allows for you to pass urine on the toilet or to pass a stool on the toilet easily. Um, in terms of sexual function, they often have a role to play um, with pleasure or awareness um, and obviously in, in orgasm as well. And in a male, it helps with the erection of the penis. Um, so when there's a problem with any of these muscles, if they become either weak or they become tight, then it could lead to a dysfunction, which means that you are going to experience problems um, in any of those fields. Typically, we will see that when a muscle is weak, when it becomes sort of lax and loose, um, that you will have a control problem. So that might lead to bladder leaking or um, stool leaking or even pelvic organ prolapse. And prolapse is a condition where the organs inside the pelvis, which is the bladder, the vagina, the uterus, and the rectum at the back, sag lower. So they can prolapse, not always out of the openings, but they just sit lower, and that in itself can lead to, lead to problems. It's something that more women than men actually struggle with. So we see quite a lot of ladies, especially when they're around menopause, they could struggle with um, pelvic organ prolapse. And then sometimes if these muscles are too tight, that also mm -hmm. leads to a whole host of problems because if they're too tight, it means that they do not relax as well as they should, so that could lead to problems passing stool, can contribute to constipation. Um, it can cause a lot of pain around the area. So pain either in the genitals or around the perineum or even 
around the pelvic area, the abdomen, as well as the legs. So pain is something that we see quite often in patients um, and also something that people um, sometimes just don't get diagnosed well because the doctors will do tests and they don't really find something wrong. They don't find an infection. They don't find a disease as such, but the person still has pain. And then sometimes mm -hmm. the problem basically lies in the musculoskeletal system. And that is what we as physiotherapists can then deal with again. Uh, looking at the urinary function, let me focus on the urinary function first. There's a tendency of women, especially after multiple childbirth and uh, issues of age that we've actually uh, mentioned, and uh, assisted births, I mean, assisted delivery, like forceps and cups and so on, vacuum extraction, mm -hmm. to to have bits and pieces of urine that are actually, they, they, they lose control. That is stress incontinence and... Uh, agency, incontinence, and so on. Is, is there anything within ourselves that we can do in terms of the tone of the muscles to control the bladder function? Definitely. You know, like you've mentioned, women often after pregnancy or childbirth might have problems because the muscles um, carried baby for nine months, so there's been a lot of stress on those muscles. It's not always the childbirth itself, if it's a vaginal childbirth. Um, that actually causes the problem. But obviously, like you mentioned, um, when you use forceps or vacuum extraction for delivery, then that is could possibly um, affect the muscles even more. But certainly, so when there is a problem with the muscles, we as physiotherapists um, can advise patients on how to do pelvic floor exercises. Pelvic floor exercises are those exercises you go and read on the internet that talk about Kegel exercises. Um, mm -hmm. And it's basically the same exercise that we will instruct people in. But as physios, we believe that you should first examine the muscles and just see exactly what the person is dealing with. You know, if you okay. take a history from a patient, you can often, from what they're telling you, make a fairly good guess about what the state of their muscles is. But we should never just assume that, for instance, because they are leaking, they've got weak muscles or lax muscles. Those muscles, if they're tight, are often also weak. So we need to examine the muscles and decide, are they tight? Or are they not tight? Are they just lax and loose? Because we treat it slightly differently. Um, so we will basically teach the patient about the pelvic floor exercises, um, but we also need to make sure that they are doing the exercises in the right way. Because if they do it in the wrong way, they could actually aggravate the problem. So for instance, okay. with Kegel exercises, um, a lot of the times when you go and read on the internet and they talk about you have to be able to squeeze your muscles hard and you have to be able to hold on for a while in order to give you better control. And that is yeah. true. But you also have to be able to relax these muscles. And if people are not taught how to do that well, that can then sometimes aggravate the problem. Um, and I think the other thing that it's not necessarily difficult with the pelvic floor, but because it's an internal muscle and you cannot really see it, you have to rely on how it feels when you're doing the action. Um, people sometimes struggle with this, especially if they've got a weakness or a tightness. They might not yeah. necessarily feel that easily. So although one can talk somebody through about how to do a pelvic floor exercise, um, sometimes people just need a little bit more assistance and guidance um, from a person who's been educated like a physiotherapist in order to just teach them how to do these exercises effectively. Um, I don't know if you want me to go through what a pelvic floor exercise should be like. Yes, I, I, would, I would appreciate, but just before you go to that, let's look at the role of this muscles when it comes to sexual issues. There's a lot of men who actually suffer from uh, premature ejaculation, and we keep telling them that there's, a, there, there, there's a, an important muscle called the PC muscle, the pubococcygeus muscle. It assists in terms of lifting the penis, and it also assists in terms of delaying ejaculation. And uh, hence you said, these muscles are not only important in women, they're also important in men. And uh, what role do these muscles play in the sexual health of women? What can go wrong and what can go well in terms of fulfilling sexual life when you look at the sexual uh, health of the pelvic floor muscles? So you mean specifically in females? In females, yeah. Yes, so um, 
remember these muscles and because of where they are situated. If um, sexual intercourse is taking place, firstly, these muscles need to be able to be relaxed enough to allow a mm -hmm. penis to enter the vagina. If these muscles yeah. are tight and they cannot relax well, a woman may really experience a lot of pain and discomfort um, when somebody tries to penetrate. And that can be a huge problem for many females. Um, the causes vary. Uh, and, you know, so often people just think, oh, it's normal. I just need to live with it. And it's not the truth. Um, unfortunately, also sometimes people will go to the doctor and say, I've got pain with intercourse. And many times they will be told that they just have to relax. And I think that makes a woman feel that she's not good enough or she's failing her husband or a partner. Um, and it's important for them to understand that, no, there might actually be a physical problem with your muscles. And that's why you're struggling to have intercourse. So the one thing is that they might not be able to allow penetration because the muscles are too tight. Tight's but it's also mm -hmm. going to affect the lubrication of the area. You know, if you think about um, intercourse, when a woman becomes aroused, there should be um, lubrication of the area to make it easier to have intercourse. And if the muscles yeah. are too tight, that often does not happen well. Um, and then if some women will also find that they struggle with orgasm because the muscles are either too tight or too weak. And that might lead them not to be able to have an orgasm. Um, so there's yeah, we... multiple... Thank you for touching yeah. on the issue of orgasm. A lot of women are actually struggling to, to have orgasm. Um, I, I, I looked at a various studies that uh, 20 to 40 percent of women actually struggle to get orgasm and about 20 percent have never had it and uh, they start faking it. Do these muscles, can sorting these muscles as physiotherapists, does it help in improving the number of women who actually uh, eventually experience the real orgasm? It actually can. You know, I think with orgasm, it's important to remember that there are, can also be other causes that can um, be the reason for them not being able to experience an orgasm. And therefore, it is important that they actually have a medical examination, maybe have their hormones checked to see what other possible um, things could contribute to the problem that they are experiencing. But especially when the doctors do not find other problems, um, then maybe it could be their pelvic floor muscles. And certainly by exercising the muscles, um, in the correct manner again, you can definitely see an improvement in terms of orgasm. You know, so again, you need to determine is the muscle too tight to allow the, um, it to work well to help with an orgasm or is it too weak and therefore it cannot, mm -hmm. cannot really generate sufficient force um, to get a proper orgasm. And that is what we will examine when you look at the muscle. Thank you so much. And then let's look at the last part of the uh, function of the pelvic uh, muscles, the gastrointestinal act, as you have shown us in the picture that the anus is in the midst of all these structures. And we know that uh, there are people who engage in anal sex and there are men who are having sex with men where the anus is actually one of the structures that people use. And uh, I know the anal sphincter uh, is, can, can crack easily and so on. Looking at the, the structure that you've shown us, uh, there, there's, a, there's an element or there's a study that shows that a lot of people who engage in anal sex, they tend to have fecal incontinence. I what can you advise? I've lost contact with you again. I you've lost contact with me. Can me. I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Hello, Hester. In the meantime, we are busy looking at the pelvic floor muscles. I'm speaking to a physiotherapist whose special interest is uh, to focus on the pelvic floor muscles. She's got special interest on the pelvic floor muscles as a physiotherapist, which is a critical area in terms of uh, control of incontinence, be it urine, be it fecal incontinence, and in terms of sexual health, those muscles are critical. I seem to have lost here uh, in terms of... Uh, can you hear me, Esther? Can you hear me? Hi, can you hear me now? 
I don't know what's happening to the sound. We seem to have lost the sound. Hester, can you hear me? Uh, let me apologize to our viewers in the meantime. Yeah, people can hear me. I think the problem is on your side. Hester, can you check if you have not pressed anything? Hester, can you hear me? I can hear the dogs behind you. In the meantime, while we're actually sorting the sound, let me just summarize for our viewers. In the same coverage, Leo, the Jonga is the Shono, the Lapa Kum Ganga to Low Wessing, in the Balegangazo is the Shono, the Dobas and Metis, I will allow Lane, no control on Tam. Kama, Nakao decided to bandes of Kamas or Mingum Kamas, the Anglades as soon, Nakao Minga Ilinje, the Anglades as soon for Rulao and Doba, I, Akabuko window, writing Doba, Ungaya, Toilet, or Yungan Skulula, then the Nightis of Ming. Then a woman came to Wabelan against Sondo as soon as the Anglaisa, for controller, no Nightis I quality, Yokazim, that is a figure of Vutondaba, the Pinders Nightis as soon of Bandaban Gutata, for controller, Lom Tim Boba, Tadanga Zikangoko, or Kanya as a card, but when I Emphasis I can I can in a hairstyle is a physiotherapist, Kuba, Kuba legal and obeys as soon as in a clinical cool and try to near muscles. Out on lunch bus, be fit a cool part of Jong and Doba, the quas, Ola leg and Okutamba, the Lungele in Doba, as is a quasu controller, both as is in Dossi Tetangazo. We're just checking on the sound so that she can take us through. I don't know why she has lost sound. We're just sorting out the sound issue so that she can get connected again. Hester, can you hear me? Uh, while we are still trying to sort uh, Hester's sound, let me just apologize for the temporary loss of sound there. I don't know why she can't hear me. Can you hear me? Everything seems, seems fine on my side. Okay, our technician will actually sort the problem out. Uh, we are looking into the pelvic floor muscle dysfunction. Unga se mizika o kliwe zisunu zinga disayo u controla ilinge u controla umtamo numtimbi u wabela nage sondo. We have got a physiotherapist with special interest to Hester was actually telling us through what do they do as physiotherapists in the field of sexual health and also in terms of bladder control and in terms of uh, control of the anal sphincters uh, the fitness or tone of those muscles can actually help you in a number of uh, issues we're just trying to sort out the sound so that she can take us through some of the interesting things and the nice things that she's got demonstrations for us so that we don't only get to know what uh, casual exercise is we now get to see 
from the hands and mouth of a physiotherapist and uh, so that we're able to do it on our own. Can you hear me now? I can. It seems like we've got our connection back. Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to our IT. Uh, can you now take us through the, what can we do as, as women in case of uh, malfunctioning of these muscles? We've taken a patient to you because some of these muscles are malfunctioning, evidenced by poor control of urine or poor sexual health issues or issues of uh, fecal incontinence. What do you actually do? I'm looking at things like uh, things that we hear or learn about like vaginal cones or gel balls. And also if you can also demonstrate for the benefit of uh, our women, how to do the Kelgel exercise properly. Since you are doing these things uh, on everyday basis, can you just flow on that? Okay, so I'm going to start off by um, explaining to you how it works to do a pelvic floor exercise. Um, when we look at the muscles, we should firstly be able to get the muscle to move well, just like any other muscle in the body. Moving your pelvic floor means that you should be able to squeeze and tighten the muscles that squeezing and tightening feeling feels like an action around the two sphincters where you close and tighten them. And then also um, thinking about creating a little bit of a lifting action of the muscle on the inside. So very often people are told to squeeze and tighten your pelvic floor, knape like we say in Afrikaans. Um, that actually means that you are getting that muscle to shorten. Um, it feels like sucking on your thumb if you think about the action of sucking on your thumb think about hmm, that action means that you're closing your mouth and that you're creating a little bit of a lifting action on the inside so when you squeeze and tighten your pelvic floor you think about squeezing in the front part around the bladder vaginal area like you're holding a wheel or you're squeezing around the back section the um, anal area like you're holding a wind um, that action should then produce a feeling of squeezing and lifting. And then the second part of the um, action is actually a lowering or a letting go. If you compare this muscle to a lift, it's like you're standing, it's at its ground floor. As you squeeze and tighten, you first close the doors and then you lift. So imagine that you're going a little bit up to the first floor. And then after that, you should be able to relax down again. Um, it is really important to make sure that you get all of these actions right. Very often when people think about Kegel exercises, they only think about how hard they should squeeze or how much they should lift or how long they should be able to hold the contraction. But it's also really important to make sure that you can release the muscle tension and just let go again. So that's the first thing that we will focus on, getting people to do this action correctly and it's important to combine it with how you are breathing. A lot of people, when you tell them to tighten their pelvic floors, will just hold their breath. So they sort of suck up and in and they hold tight. And that's not the correct way of doing it. Um, remember what I said previously is that the diaphragm is part of the core muscles and your diaphragm and your pelvic floor actually works together. So when you're breathing in, your diaphragm should move downwards to allow the lungs to fall with air. And at the same time, your tummy muscles and your pelvic floor muscles should relax a little bit to allow that movement to happen. When you then breathe out, your um, tummy and your pelvic floor muscles return to their normal position. So when you exercise your pelvic floor muscles, when you squeeze and tighten them, we get people to do that on the breath out to prevent them from holding their breath. And a lot of people actually struggle with this. They find it quite hard to breathe in and relax and breathe out and at the same time then tighten their pelvic floors. People tend to want to almost hold their breath and we really don't want them doing it like that because you'll never be able to exercise your muscles in an effective way. So that basic way that I've now explained to you is how you should um, start exercising your pelvic floor. Again, under the guidance of a physio, they will be able to really tell you what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. If you struggling with the breathing, they can help you, maybe position you in different ways to really get that action right. And, and one 
that's the first step, I think, of starting to exercise these muscles, is making sure that you get the basic understanding and that you know that you're doing that correctly. And then you want to um, that, then one can really actually um, start by teaching you other ways. And if necessary, one can try and use kegel balls or vaginal weights or whatever else is necessary. The, the balls and the weights are typically things that we would use for strengthening. So for the person who's weak and they um, don't have good strong muscles, we could maybe add those. So I'm going to show you what these look like. So these are just examples. Um, this is one type of Kegel balls or vaginal balls that you can get. There's different types available on the market, but the idea is, is that you can insert this into the vagina um, and above the level of the pelvic floor. So the pelvic floor should be sitting below um, the balls. And when you hold them in the vagina, and you're trying to keep them in, it's like you're exercising the muscles um, to make them stronger. And a vaginal weight that looks like this basically works in the same manner. Some of them, like this little one, can open up, and then you can put small weights on the inside. So you will start with a lighter weight, and as you progress and you get stronger, you can then add more weights in to make um, the muscles work a little bit harder. So these are just two types of devices that you could um, use to try and strengthen your pelvic floor. Again, I would always suggest that women really have an assessment before they just try these devices. Because so if just you before, to, just you before you go further, Hester, just before you yes. go further. So you say we are using the vagina for weightlifting. In a way, if you wanted to put it like that, yes. You know, if you're exercising any other muscle in your body and you're using weights, it's an extra form of, not an extra form of exercise, but it's a stronger type of exercise to help the muscles strengthen. So yes. where needed and in the correct situation, these could be like a weight that you add to the exercises. Um, so, is, you know, it's just this... another way. Is this something that can be done by any woman or is it something that we should do only after birth or when we've got a diagnosis of a uh, malfunctioning of the pelvic muscles? Can, can I ask my girl to go and do it or is, is it age related or whatever? Um, it's not necessarily age related. Obviously in a younger person um, under 18 or if you're not sexually active, I don't think it's something that they should be doing. But the question yeah. is, is it necessary? You know, sometimes mm. we've got this idea that all women should be um, exercising their pelvic floors to make them stronger. Maybe people feel that that will give them a better sexual experience or a better orgasm. It's not necessarily true. You know, is it necessary? Um, you know, so again, if there's a problem, yes, then I think it can be useful. But it's not, it doesn't mean that every person out there should be doing um exercises with a vaginal weight or a ball. So it's um, for a certain, yeah. certain group of women? Yes, if there's a problem, if there's an indication for that. You know, and I think just as a warning, um, a lot of women out there actually have tight pelvic floors. We often see that in people like dancers or um, gymnasts um, and also people who experience a lot of stress and anxiety often carry quite a lot of tension in their pelvic floors. And that type of person, if they go and exercise with a weight or with a Kegel ball, they could actually aggravate their symptoms. They, they often experience pain, but some people do not necessarily have pain, even if they've got a tight pelvic floor. But if they then exercise with something like a weight, um, it's like they can injure themselves. So I always caution women and say, don't just go and assume that you are able to do something with the pelvic floor muscles. Mm -hmm because they're a little bit hidden and you cannot see them necessarily. If you think that there's a problem, rather have them assessed. A, a physio who deals with pelvic floor problems will very easily be able to tell you whether you should be working with a weight or not. And if you have, if it's something that you have tried at home and you are struggling or you're causing pain, then please go and see somebody that can help you with that. Um, yeah, so I always advise women to, to have your muscles assessed because then you really know what you are dealing with. Never assume. Your, your symptoms might make you think, oh, I've got this problem. But 
sometimes you find that even though you think you might be weak and lax and loose, you're actually holding tension there. And you need to be able to learn how to balance the tone and the tension in your pelvic floor muscles in order to also exercise them in the best way possible. Thank you so much. That is very clear and loud. Would you then advise every woman after childbirth to go for assessment of the pelvic floor muscles? In the ideal situation, yes, we would like to see that because I think pregnancy and childbirth is one of the um, situations or one of the things that we go through in life that really does affect the pelvic floor muscles. You know, and in countries like France, for instance, they've got a program where all women after they've given birth, are taught how to exercise their muscles. Um, and they are checked, I think, after four or six weeks to make sure that they're actually getting things right and that things are going better again. And in case they still have problems, they're actually given free treatment. I mean, that's the ideal situation. We don't have that in South Africa. But I do think that if women are educated and, um, if possible at all, that they actually should have an assessment of their pelvic floor. Because sometimes they don't have a problem immediately necessarily. But if they could have looked after their pelvic floor muscles well, they might be able to prevent problems as they get older. Because a lot of women's problems um, come to the front when they're menopausal. And then you're 20 and 30 years down the line, which might be a little bit more difficult to do something about. So yes, I would like to see that in the ideal world, all women actually... Um, at least see a physio once if they can, just to have their muscles assessed and be instructed in how to do the exercises correctly. You know, we take responsibility for the rest of our bodies and we go to the gym and we exercise and we try and keep ourselves healthy and strong, but that in itself does not necessarily help your pelvic floor if you don't understand how to incorporate the pelvic floor exercises in your normal exercise routine. That's, that's very effective and uh, very clear. Can you show us the Kegel cones and the Kegel ball again? For the sake of the people who actually missed it, can you just show us so that we show this one is the Kegel cones and then this one is the Kegel ball. Can can we get these things in any adult shop or should we see uh, someone like you, a physiotherapist who's actually focused on pelvic floor or is it something that I can get easily? So vaginal cones, as far as I know, this is this little one. And there's different um, types of them. They, they don't all look the same. This one you can see has sort of got a cone shape, but some are just um, more straight and are not quite like this. So you get different types. In South Africa, we always have less things available that, that is available overseas. So we, they're not that easily accessible. These you will not find in a pharmacy or even in a sex shop or adult shop. I don't think so. These you can generally order through a medical practitioner or a physiotherapist should be able to, to get hold of some for you. You know, at least nowadays, even if we struggle to get it in South Africa, we can order it from overseas. Um, but they're not available in the pharmacies. Um, the balls, um, like these ones, and there's different types available, depending on, on uh, some of the, I think some of the adult shops might sell them. Um, but sometimes you can also order them from the manufacturer. Um, so a physiotherapist, again, who does um, pelvic health should be able to assist you if you um, want to order some of these to, to try and help you get some of that. I hope people have got it very clearly that uh, if things were ideal in South Africa and if everything was going according to our wishes, uh, every woman after childbirth would actually go for these classes uh, and to actually be trained on this for assessment of the pelvic floor muscles and so on for recovery, noting that the baby is, is too big and the vagina is elastic. It will allow the, the baby to go through. For So for things to go back to normal, it would be recommended that everyone goes for assessment and then they go through... Uh, these exercises which are guided so that uh, we don't have hypertonic issues and uh, uncontrollable muscles because we we'll lose control of urine and we we'll lose control of our uh, 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 rectal function and also our sexual health will actually be affected. Hence, we have actually brought uh, one with special interest on the pelvic floor muscles. So if we can control and we can uh, have con uh, management of our pelvic floor muscles properly, then we can actually be able to have a healthy pelvic floor, which is what we are looking after.
to prevent mm-hmm. stress in continents, to prevent uh, agency in continents, and to have better control of urine, noting that uh, a lot of women have struggles when they sneeze, they lose uh, uh, bits and pieces of urine, and even men for that matter. Uh, thank you very much for the insight, especially on those. There's something that is uh, a lot of women engage in, it's called vaginal steaming. Have you ever heard of vaginal steaming? Uh, you mean the stimulation of the pelvic floor with an electrode? No, no, no. They sit on a bucket of hot water, uh, hot water, oh, and then they yeah, allow yeah. the steam, especially after birth and so on. It's a very common traditional practice. What is your take on that in view of what you're actually pushing educationally? So I don't think that vaginal steaming is going to assist your pelvic floor function necessarily. You know, women might do that for different reasons. Um, yes, it's not a, a practice that I'm necessarily very aware of, um, but I don't think it's going to assist your muscles to exercise better or to work better. Um, women might do vaginal steaming for other reasons, um, but yeah, like I say, I think from a muscular perspective, that is not really going to make a huge difference. Sometimes after birth, Women might douche um, or they might use sitz baths if they have a wound to help heal that. Um, so I know that that is also common practice. Dr. T, I think we've lost connection again. You seem to have disappeared. So maybe while we are waiting um, for Dr. T to, to just connect again, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the pelvic floor muscles and the actual exercises. We've talked a lot about how to um, contract these muscles and how to be able to recognize what it feels like when you squeeze them. So remember what I said earlier, you squeeze in the front area around the bladder and vagina as if you're holding a wee, or you can imagine in the middle section that you can squeeze as if you have holding a tampon or at the back passage you can also squeeze as if you are holding the wind and that action will then produce the tightening and the lifting action then when we breathe in we will try and focus on letting go of these muscles and that's what i said earlier on that it's as important to be able to let go um, as it is to be able to create a good squeeze And when you have tension in these muscles, a lot of women really struggle with that feeling of letting go. That They they feel that they are able to tighten, but then they feel that they cannot let go. And there we really make use of breathing techniques to help women to let go and relax the tension in these muscles. So it's something that I really want to um, enforce is that women think about that, that they really make sure that when they are exercising the pelvic floor muscles, they really make sure that they get good relaxation. Um, uh-huh. When you are doing other types of exercise programs like Pilates or CrossFit, there's a lot of increase in tension in your pelvic floor when you are doing that, and it's necessary because you're exercising, so you need the support. But then if you've got increased tension, you might not relax as well. And there you really need to spend a little bit of time with breathing or stretching or certain relaxation positions to make sure that you then let go again. So it's always the balance between those two that on the one hand, you need to be able to squeeze and tighten. And on the other hand, you really need to be able to let go of tension. Now, now that you've actually highlighted the use of vaginal cones and uh, the kegel balls in women, is there any equivalent in men to, to do the same thing? 
Can we use the pennies to lift some of these weights? So generally, no, I don't think so. Um, with men, you find that they don't really have the same types of problems that women do. They don't go through pregnancy and childbirth. Their anatomy is different. So when we have leaking problems in men, we typically see it after they have had a prostatectomy, so prostatectomy surgery. Mm -hmm. um, but because their anatomy is different, they really won't walk with, work with this type of device. Sometimes we find that when men are struggling to um, init initiate a contraction of their pelvic floor, and if they really, like after surgery, if the muscles have been really weakened, then we can think of a device like um, electrical stimulation where you yeah. um, use an electrical probe and you send a current through the muscles and that stimulation will, will then create the muscular contraction. And the um, idea behind that is that, number one, it teaches you how to do the action, but secondly, it will also strengthen the, the, the action of the muscles in the end so that you are able to do that on your own. So that's also something that we do with females, um, the electrical stimulation when they are too weak. And then there's another um, machine that we can use. We use call it biofeedback, where you are also working with an internal probe and you then get a measurement on the machine. So if you think about the um, ultrasounds that the doctors do for the ladies when they're pregnant and they've got a visual, so you can actually see what's happening. And this is a little bit similar. You get um, mm -hmm. a reading from the probe and you can then see on a picture or a graph how the patient is um, contracting or relaxing these muscles. So is something that we can use when necessary when patients are struggling. But yeah, men as a rule, we will not prescribe something like eagle balls or vaginal weights. There's, a, there's an issue that is bothering a lot of people, the issue of penis size compared to the size of the vagina, especially after birth, which is why a lot of people are doing a lot of activities and inserting a lot of uh, stuff into the vagina to make it tighter and tighter. Hence, it is important to have a person like you to actually demonstrate and teach uh, women of today the safest ways mm -hmm. of actually doing some of these exercises and mm -hmm. so on. Uh, the issue of uh, kegel exercise and uh, squatting, are we doing it right? Are, are, we, are we teaching our women to do this right? So when you are squatting, you need to think about what is happening in the body. Are you necessarily working your pelvic floor? Technically, if you go into a low squat and you stay in a squat, it actually places the pelvic floor at a stretch. Um, so that is why when we think about people who's constipated and they are struggling to pass a stool, that we adopt a position on the toilet where they use a little footstool to get their knees higher than their, their hips. So it's imitating a squatting position. So that actually places the pelvic floor at a little bit of a stretch. When you're doing squatting exercises, um, you need to think about engaging your pelvic floor at the same time and knowing that you actually have a proper action of your pelvic floor. And then you can make the pelvic floor exercise part of your squatting exercise. Just doing squats does not necessarily activate your pelvic floor. So okay. one must just be mindful of that. You know, in a normal situation, we have got normal pelvic floor function. They should automatically contract and relax as you are doing the exercise. But when you've got a problem, they don't always do that. And that's where we then teach the activation. And then you can certainly incorporate it into other exercises, squats being one of them. That's, that's very clear and loud. Very clear and loud. And then uh, there, there are other types of exercises that are not necessarily focusing on the on the pelvic floor muscles, do they have any impact as to what is happening down there? Can I leave the rest of the exercise of my body and just focus on the pelvic floor? No. I think when you are exercising, you need to exercise your whole body. Um, but people sometimes think that when they're doing other exercise programs, the pelvic floor will just strengthen at the same time. And it doesn't always happen. Again, if you've got normal muscles, yes, it might happen. But if you do not have normal functioning muscles, then they, um, you, you need to be more mindful and you need to bring in your pelvic floor specifically. So other types of exercises are good. I mean, if you are walking or swimming or doing gym work, it can be good. Um, and it's important for the rest of your health. Um, I would generally 
um, encourage women to really think about how they are working with their core muscles, which includes the pelvic floor, and also making sure that they're doing things that doesn't load the pelvic floor necessarily. People who do CrossFit, which is really strong exercise, um, sometimes actually struggle with leaking because they're really loading the pelvic floor to such an extent that it can almost be harmful. So you need to, again, think about the load that you're placing on your pelvic floor. If you're working with weights, um, you can also load your pelvic floor in a, in a manner that's almost harmful. So you need to know what's happening. And I think that's often what people don't realize, is that when you are doing other exercises, you can be harming your pelvic floor. Some things like, for instance, we sometimes see people who's got pelvic pain, um, if they do... Um, go on outrides on bikes and they do hundreds of kilometers at a, at a time that the sitting position then actually places quite a lot of pressure on their pelvic floor and that can for instance also not be good and i'm not saying that people shouldn't do that but they should be mindful if they are experiencing problems what is happening in their pelvic floor uh, then i will now open the floor to questions i'll be reading the questions as they come through can you just summarize the today's lessons in about a minute or so and then show us that the pelvic brim again just to summarize everything that we've gone through in terms of the wellness of the pelvic floor muscles we'll appreciate to see that uh, pelvic brim again just take us through the summary of today's lessons at the, at the muscles here yes so remember that your pelvic floor muscles are these inner little muscles on the inside of the pelvis, stretching from the pubic symphysis in front to the coccyx and the sacrum there at the back. And there's more than one layer. You've got the deeper layer, and then you've also got the superficial layer here with the sphincters in front around the bladder vagina and the anal sphincter at the back. And your pelvic floor muscles are the player role in function of the bladder in order to give us control if they, um, because they should tighten around the openings. They also play a role with elimination, they should be able to relax well enough. So that's both for bladder and bowel. And obviously the pelvic floor, um, if they're strong enough around the anal sphincter, also aids in control. And your pelvic floor muscles play a role in support um, for the organs on the inside. Um, and then they also play a role in sexual function. And for proper pelvic health, and um, I'm sometimes even hesitant to say strong pelvic floor muscles because then people think they should have these strong muscles you should have good functional muscles. They should be able to contract on the one hand, but they should also be able to relax on the other hand to allow for normal function, pain-free intercourse, no leaking. You shouldn't be constipated. You know, typically, if you're struggling with any of those things, then maybe you should think about whether your pelvic floor is a problem, a part of the problem. That's a, that's a nice summary. And then we do the casual exercise, the, the vaginal cones and the casual balls. Uh, how easily accessible are pelvic floor muscle physiotherapists in South Africa? How many are you and how accessible are you? So unfortunately, we are a fairly small group. If you think about our total group of physiotherapists, we really are quite a small group. But there are physios in most provinces and most bigger cities, certainly. Um, in the smaller outlying areas, we sometimes don't have physios who has done this work. But, you know, I would encourage people, even if you are somewhere far away and if you're struggling to get hold of somebody, um, they're welcome to email me and I have a list of people who deals with these type of problems. Maybe we can refer people. And even in our public sector hospitals, we now have more and more physios who are dealing with this. So it's nice to, to know that that is available. You know, one really wants to try and make sure that it is accessible to each and every person out there. So if somebody does have a problem and they feel that they need help, they must really contact us and we can try and make a plan. But yes, unfortunately, you know, if you think of how many physios there are in South Africa, our group is about 180 or 200 strong in the whole of South Africa. So there's not that many of us. Uh, there's, a, there's a question that comes from our YouTube channel. Uh, let me just remind people, you can follow us as Apile Communications on our YouTube channel. We are live and also on our Facebook channel. We are also live. Please don't forget to subscribe. Just click on subscribe on our YouTube. You like and you can share whatever content is there because these are lifelong lessons. We are doing life coaching like it has never been done before. This is for you. Just follow us and make sure that you click on like and you click on share and also you subscribe. It's free. It doesn't tell any money. There's a question that after birth, most women are advised to do six baths and so on. 
does that add any value after birth in terms of uh, restoring the muscle tone and the recovery to what it was before? I think the sits bath is more going to help just with healing of the perineal area, especially after you've had a vaginal birth. It doesn't necessarily have an impact on the muscles. In order to get your muscles to function better, you really have to exercise them. Um, and it is these exercises can be started directly after birth. You know, even if you have a little tear, um, you can actually they're generally gentle enough that you can start them quickly after birth. Um, so people shouldn't be afraid of of doing these exercises. Um, so although the sit spas I think will help with comfort and healing of the wounds, it's not going to get your muscles stronger or more functional. That's loud and clear. How soon how soon should uh, we start having sex after childbirth? If you've had vaginal childbirth, most of the time people are told to avoid sex for four to six weeks until they, if, especially if there's a tear or a wound that needs to heal. Now, if there's any bleeding or any discharge from the area, you're probably not going to want to engage in sexual intercourse. Um, for some people, it can be earlier. You know, if they've got they've healed well, they don't have any pain or so in the in the area, then it might not be a problem to have earlier, but most doctors will probably tell people four to six weeks until the wound is healed. And obviously, I think the female, the woman should take note and see if she's got discomfort with intercourse still, then she should think about why. You know, there's generally then a reason, and then it's maybe wiser to, to just hang on for a little while until you actually can have pain-free intercourse. Good. That's, uh, that's well said and very clear. Then what, uh, I'm just looking if there's any question that I'm missing. I think you've answered that one very well. It's coming from you, our YouTube channel, the SysBuzz one. And then this one is not relevant. I see it's about fertility issues. I'll take care of that one. Uh, I think we've covered the, you've covered the most of the questions that people are asking. Where can we get hold of you? Can you just tell us on your social networks, your sites and your consultations where are you based here and so on just in summary how can people get hold of you so i'm in Gauteng. i see patients either in douglasdale or Rudaput or at donald gordon in parktown so those are the areas and i think if people want to get hold of me they're welcome to email me that's probably the easiest my, my do you want me to give me your email yes address? please yes so it's hester h-e-s-t-e-r dot asvegen a S W E G E N at gmail.com. They're welcome to email me if they've got questions or even if they want to know if there's a physio in their area, I could probably refer them to somebody. Um, and I think, yeah, that's the easiest way of getting hold of me. I, um, they could also WhatsApp me, you know, during the day when one's busy with patients, one can't always answer calls. So email is probably the better way. That's perfect. And uh, I think we've come to the end of our session. Let me thank you very much on behalf of uh, Appeal Communications for the well-presented uh, session. And uh, this lesson is not only for today. It's a last lifelong lesson, and it will go a long way to empower our people, especially noting that it's Women's Month. A lot of people engage in uh, activities that have got no foundation scientifically because of lack of information. Your presence in our a window of appeal communications actually presents people with their knowledge, empowerment, and information so that uh, when they do some of these things, they don't do them out of lack of uh, education and knowledge, but they do them out of choice. Thank you very much for the valuable lessons and thank you for bringing us Isin. We call that Isin, that is the pelvic brim. People have actually seen the muscles and thank you for showing us the bits and pieces of the kettle balls and the combs. Uh, some people don't even know that uh, those things uh, exist. Uh, your message to men having sex with men when it comes to issue of uh, safety in terms of HIV. You know, I think people must always be safe. And, and if you are engaging in sexual intercourse, use a condom so that you are taking care that you are not spreading a disease that you don't want to. So people should be safe in whatever practice they choose to, to engage. Um, I don't think, you know, people have different choices and it's, it's up to them, but just be safe. Uh, someone is saying I must just check what's up and see if there's any farewell question for you. Maybe they've got a farewell question for you. 
before I release you. Uh, I think I'll take this. Uh, Hester, let me take this opportunity to thank you once again. Your lessons were very clear. They were very practical. And I'm sure people know now we don't only have to keep the, the muscles in shape, but we must make sure that we don't overdo things because tone is very important when it comes to uh, getting control of those muscles. And we have now seen clearly how those muscles look like and we'll take care of them. And even some of the general practitioners and some physios who are actually watching us all over, they will have gained a lot of lessons in terms of actually generating more interest in people who are actually able to address some of these uh, pelvic floor muscle issues. Thank you very much. And may you continue to liberate South Africa and uh, with all these uh, lessons. And uh, I hope a lot of women will now learn that not everything that you put in there will actually help. There are things that are safe, there are things that are well researched, and there are things that are proven to work. Thank you so much for today. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. We'll share your email address and uh, don't uh, forget uh, to. You, you, are, you are visible on Facebook. Eh? Did you share your Facebook page so that people can actually check you if you know your page? Um, I actually don't even know the address. I'm sorry. But if they go and have a look at Hester van Aswegen Physiotherapy, they should find me. And I could actually just share the link with you um, if you, I don't know it offhand. But if they search for Hester van Aswegen Physiotherapy, they should be able to find me. Thank you so much. And the website is My Sexual Health. My Sexual Health. That is your sexual health and my sexual health and everyone's sexual health is now in good hands because we are in the field of sexual medicine and we want people to be liberated in the mind and to do things right. Thank you very much for today and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Keep well. Keep well too.